The Man in the Red Bandana. When he was only seven years old, Wells was given a bandana by his father. It was a special gift that made Wells feel strong. Wells' dad carried a blue bandana and Wells' new bandana was just like it, only red. From the moment Wells received that bandana, he carried it with him everywhere. It had lots of uses. It was a cowboy mask, a pirate hat, a flag to signal the end of a race. As Wells grew up, he stopped using his red bandana as a toy and started to use it underneath his helmets. You see, Wells was an athlete whose favorite sports were ice hockey and lacrosse. He wore that bandana underneath his helmet to keep the sweat out of his eyes. Wells not only wore a helmet when he played sports, he also wore one as a volunteer firefighter. At the age of 16, Wells again followed his father's example and became a volunteer fireman. He trained with real firefighters and was taught that rescuing people who were trapped inside was their first priority. He also learned how to get safely through the burning building and put out the fires. It was his training and the red bandana that helped Wells become a hero. I wonder how the bandana made him a hero. Did it give him some kind of special strength, you think? I'm not sure. After college, Wells went to work on the 104th floor of the World Trade Center in New York City. Wells loved working up so high, he often called his father on rainy days to ask, is it raining where you are? When his father replied that it was, Wells would say, well, it's sunny up here. But on Tuesday morning, September 11, 2001, it was not a rainy day. The sun was bright and there were no clouds in the blue sky. Wells sat in his office, he heard an explosion nearby that rattled his desk and his chair. When he looked out the window to see the World Trade Center Tower 1 building, he could see a fire spewing out of the floors right across from him. I wonder why he loved being in the tower. Not only was the weather different, but maybe he also had a good view of the city. Wells wanted to help with the tragic situation unfolding in the next tower. Just minutes after the explosion in Tower 1, Wells left his office. To get down to the lobby from above the 78th floor, you had to first take an elevator to the 78th floor sky lobby. From there, you took a non-stop elevator to the ground floor. Many people would be waiting in the sky lobby for their elevator. Wells knew it would take too long to wait for an elevator from the 104th floor to the sky lobby and then one to the ground, so he headed down the stairs. In a few minutes, Wells had made it all the way down near the 78th floor. That's when another explosion occurred, only this one was much louder and stronger than the last. Wells ran right for the door of the sky lobby, but could tell by the smoke coming into the stairwell that there were fires burning inside. Wells took out his red bandana and tied it around his nose and mouth so that he did not breathe in the smoke. So his past experience really did help him survive during this first explosion because when he was a firefighter he used the bandana to help him during his volunteer firefighting days so the red bandana is definitely going to be helping him in this situation when wells entered the sky lobby it was hard to see through all the smoke there were badly injured people who needed his help to get to safety he found a fire extinguisher to put out the flames that continued to endanger the survivors Wells immediately took charge and called out to anyone who might be able to hear him. I found the stairs. If you can get up and walk, get up now. If you are able to help someone else, help them. Follow me. I know the way. Many people were dazed, but one woman was in such a state of shock that she could not walk. Wells wanted to help as many survivors as possible. He picked up the shocked woman and, leading a group of three others, carried her down the stairs. Wells saw the air start to clear as they made it down the stairwell, so he pulled his bandana from his face when they made it to the 61st floor. The lights were on, and Wells thought it was safe to send people on their own.
Wells told the group to continue down the stairs and out of the building. He turned around and headed back up the stairs. Wells collected another group of survivors and ushered them to the stairs. Again, he led them down to clean air on the 61st floor and told them to continue on to safety. Once again, Wells went back up the stairs. During his third trip to the sky lobby, Wells found that there were people who were alive but were trapped underneath heavy pieces of metal. He knew that in order to save them, he would need a firefighter's tool called the Jaws of Life. Wells followed the stairs down to the lobby for his third and final trip. He found the command center where the firefighters and police officers were planning to re planning the rescue effort. Wells let them know that they would need the Jaws of Life up in the sky lobby. But Wells would not make it back up there. The damage was to the buildings was too severe and they soon collapsed. I wonder how many more lives he would have saved if he had the Jaws of Life tool with him or if it was already in the building. No one knew what had happened to Wells until his mother read the newspaper article. Months later in the article, survivors recalled being saved by the man in a red bandana. She said to herself, there you are, Wells. I have finally found you. Wells was recognized through pictures by two women who he led to safety. They will never forget the bravery and strength that Wells showed on that day. They will never forget the man who saved their lives. They will never forget the man in the red bandana the end.